Morning, Wiener. What are you doing? Oh, why are you crying? <coughs> Mouth is still in a lot of pain. Poor still guy. It hurts from the intubation tube. So, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, I have to go back and watch that. Uh, Wiener had a surgery done in his mouth yesterday and is still recovering today. Good day, everybody. It's a good day for a road trip. Even if it's just a little one. We can get out here on the road. We're on our way to see three of the 101 Manitoba attractions today. We're knocking off three in one day. I know, kind of ambitious. There's two in Grunthal, that's south of Steinbeck, and there's one in St. Malo. We're gonna get all those three done today. There's a bull, a buffalo, or a, yeah, a bull and a bison, I think. They call it a buffalo, but it's a bison in Grunthal. Then there's the white-tailed deer in St. Malo. We're gonna go check them out. I've driven past them countless times in my lifetime. Never really paid attention to them. But with this 101 Manitoba Roadside Attraction Challenge, it's kind of a mouthful. Gotta come up with a better name than that. But I didn't create it. I'm just accepting the challenge. It's 101 Roadside Attractions and we've already knocked off two of them. Three of them, right? 101? No. We did La Brokerie, the La Brokerie Holstein. Oh yeah, the Center of Canada sign. The Steinbach Rolls Royce. And we're gonna do three more today. Leaving us with a total of 95 remaining. So I'm glad you're here. You can come explore Southern Manitoba a little bit with me today. It's not too far. Grunthal isn't too far to go. St. Malo's a little bit of a hike but not too bad yet. We're still getting the ones close by Steinbach done first and we'll work our way out from there. So we took Highway 12 south of Steinbach. We're turning on to Provincial Highway 205 now towards Sardo. We'll go through Sardo and that'll take us right up to Grunthal. Grunthal is still in the same municipality as Steinbach. Like I said, not very far away. But you gotta start somewhere, right? These will get longer and longer. It's actually pretty fun, you know? It gives me an excuse to get out and explore my own home territory. I've, I've spent the last nine, ten years exploring all of North America, everywhere but my home territory, my home province. I've been everywhere else. 
Now it's time to see what I've all been missing right here under my nose at home. here diesel Grunthal bull this is at the Grunthal livestock market mm, looks like it's open today I just want a picture with your bull don't mind me there's a lot of people here I guess the livestock sales would be essential. I mean, people still got to eat, right? A lot of these trucks here. I'm going to park this way. There she is. My truck said it's one degree Celsius outside again. My thermostat is busted on this truck. That is not true. That is not accurate. Let's see, what do we got here? What does my phone say? No way, my phone says it's minus one. Yeah, right, let's refresh that. It's cold. Zero. Really, so that is pretty accurate. Why does it feel like it's minus 20 outside then? When did I become such a wuss? The bison is just on the other side of Brunthal. Grunthal Livestock Auction Mart. Oh, Weasel, what do you think? A lot of people here, man. What are you expecting yet, really? I thought it'd be a little quieter. I thought so too, yeah, but, huh? People need to trade their cows. It's a big deal. We need our steaks. Now I want steak. All right, so I'm gonna show you on the map here where we're at right now, how we got here. So like I said before, we went down Highway 12 from Steinbach. We turned right or west onto Highway 205. Am I right? <laughs> I'm not looking at the map right now as you are. Uh, and then uh, this Grunthal Livestock Auction Mart is just east of the town of Grunthal. So we're gonna go to the other side of the town of Grunthal where they have the, the bison. And uh, I think they got a plaque there on that one. They didn't have one here, but uh, we'll hear what they have to say about it when we get there. Let's head over. here what's that I didn't see that here last time we were we weren't here that long ago would you look at that <laughs> nice a local hot spot to hit if you're into uh, food like I am most people are they like to eat go to the Red Wing Diner here in uh, in Grunthal the hockey team here in Grunthal is called the Grunthal Red Wings, just like the Detroit Red Wings. So it's called the Red Wing Diner. It's the same logo. Uh, it's got some really good food and uh, you always want to support local as much as you can, right? So when you're headed west through town, you go around this curve that'll point your nose north and the buffalo or the bison is right here. Right here on the left. 
right by this uh, probably a Manitoba Hydro outpost building thing. Looks like someone else has been here recently too, probably doing the same challenge. Got some other tire tracks in here. Let's go see what it says. Maybe I can read it from here. Maybe I can zoom in on it for you guys. If not, you can pause it. Let's say donors to this project. It just has the people who paid for it. Uh, the Grun it says the Grunthal Chamber of Commerce erected this statue in 1995 to commemorate the tourism brought to this area through the efforts of Nick and Sarah Jantz and their family at the Cottonwood Corner Game Farm. Cool. I don't know about you, but to me it looks like this bison has a few bullet holes in it. One right in the butt over there, one right in the center, and one in the head. But you know, those could be where they lifted it from as well, you know? That's probably how they lifted it up there. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking a bullet hole will probably be a little bit more messy than that. I hope people aren't shooting this thing. That wouldn't be very nice. Cool, well, let's get our selfie and we'll be on our way. All right, so let's see where this next one is. St. Malo, some call it St. Malo. I believe it's St. Malo. Where is this? The white-tailed deer. How far away are you? White-tailed, white-tailed deer, St. Malo. Oh, there it is, it's got its own little field in there. Okay. So we're gonna go back through Grunthal. And go all the way around, or we can take the gravel. Yeah, we'll go back through Grunthal and then go back. It's 20 kilometers from here. About 15 minutes. Let's go before the sun is taken away from us again. Okay, instead of going all the way around through Grunthal, we're going to take this one. This is Cottonwood Road on the west side of Grunthal. Uh, it doesn't tell me if it's a provincial road or anything. I I'm pretty sure this is going to turn to gravel in just a second here. Speed limit is 70. Let's see where this takes us. Let's, let's do a little bit of backcountry exploring, shall we? I didn't even expect it to be paved this far. I'm actually pretty impressed. While we're passing through Grunthal here, figured we'd stop by the Grunthal Centennial Park. Since no one else seems to be here, I think the weasel would like to stretch his legs a little bit. Let's go check this place out. I believe we came here for uh, family photos a long time ago, but other than that, I don't really know much about this place. Big open area for him to stretch his legs. The snow isn't too deep yet. Mm, a couple inches maybe. Not too bad. Nice looking park though. Very impressed. Oh, they got more over there. Looks like a a motocross track. Oh yeah. I would love to have a dirt bike. I'd love to have a snowmobile. I'd love to have all the toys in the world. I'd also love to have all the money in the world. And I'm not there yet. Get him, Diesel. Get him. Get him. Come here. Diesel. Diesel, come here. This thing needs a wash. I say that every day. Come on, Diesel. <sighs> and I mean it every day. Hey, right, Diesel. It's just so hard to keep a truck clean. You gotta pick the right days in winter time to wash it. Uh, when it's not too cold, so your truck doesn't freeze. Cause I don't have a garage to park it in anymore. And also a day when it's cold enough that the, the road isn't all messy to get your truck dirty right away again, right? <sighs> I just gotta go and do it, I know. I know, trying to save some money too. There's that.
So this is Highway 59 southbound. This highway goes all the way up to Winnipeg. It turns into Large Modier Boulevard. When you hit Winnipeg, it goes right through the east section of Winnipeg, then continues on north of the city as Highway 59, uh, all the way up to Grand Beach, I believe. Well, I'm north of the city anyway. I'm no, I'm from south. I'm from the south of the uh, from south of the city. I don't know much about the Inner Lake or anywhere else in Manitoba. That's why we're doing this challenge so we can learn more about our own province. Like these, like today, going to Grunthal St. Malo. This isn't anything out of my way. This isn't anything uh, super special for me because I'm here all the time, right? But I want to cross them all off and I figured I'd start off with the ones I know first or the towns I know first. I'm really excited to start uh, seeing other parts of this, play, uh, this region that I never even knew existed. I can show it to you guys too. So next time you come visit Manitoba for whatever reason, you'll know where to go. Not many people visit Manitoba, so <laughs> you can explore it virtually with me. We're not going to do this every day. Like I said, I don't got enough money for gas to drive around that much, but uh, at least one or two a week. At least we'll go out once a week. That's what I want to do. At least once a week we'll go out and check some of these off. We'll see. Maybe we can do more. No promises. But we're going to get it done, all 101, including up in Churchill. Oh, it's right here. This is... Your destination is on the left. There we go. That sign over there says, Coming soon, future community project. Oh, cool. They must be building something here. But here's the white-tailed deer, anyway. Cross another one off the list. Let's see what this plaque has to say. That sun is exactly in the wrong spot for us to read that. All right, we're going to have to get out here and walk up to it. That sun is right in my eyes. So there it is. Two white-tailed deer, buck and a doe, here in St. Malo, Manitoba. You can pause it and read this if you want to, or you can Google it. It says, unveiled by His Royal Highness, the Prince Edward, the 7th of July, 1990, to commemorate the only successful deer relocation program in Canada. Wildlife for the future. This white-tailed deer statue is placed in recognition of the valuable volunteer assistance provided to the Department of Natural Resources by the St. Malo and District Wildlife Association and area residents from 1985 to 1988. 1988, that's a good year. A lot of good people were born that year. Including me. So yeah, the white-tailed deer were captured and moved from the city of Winnipeg to the St. Malo Wildlife Management Area and surrounding region. Area residents provided countless hours of assistance and equipment to transport deer during the relocation program. Isn't that cool? Also recognized is the contribution of the St. Malo District Wildlife Association area residents who contributed volunteer time and provided financial resources to establish the St. Malo Rat River Wildlife Management Area dedicated towards the preservation of our precious wildlife resource is equaled by few. So this was placed on the 7th day of July, 1990. Okay, isn't that cool? Now we know. Really cool. It's uh, right across, if you, if you know the area, it's right across from the co-op and right where that van is going down right over there, that's the entrance into St. Malo Provincial Park where you go to the beach and stuff. So next time you come here, take a gander out this way and you'll see that. Hopefully the sun won't be right in your eyes though when you come to see it. Really cool. Another one checked off the list. Again, I've been here so many times in my childhood and throughout my adult life. Never even noticed them here. The more you know. Uh, so maybe we'll go check out town a little bit on our way home. Show you around a little bit. Uh, Let's see what uh, Google has to say about this town of St. Malo. If you guys are wondering what this town is all about, as far as I know, it's a, uh, a French settled town. It says right here on Wikipedia. Where is Wikipedia? Yeah, Wikipedia says, St. Malo is an unincorporated community recognized as a local urban district located in the rural municipality of DeSalaberry. 
approximately 70 kilometers south of the Forks. That's a big landmark in Winnipeg. We're gonna be going there, don't worry. Keep, keep up with these videos. We're gonna end up there eventually. It's the biggest one in Manitoba, in the city. It's the, it's the biggest one in Winnipeg, we'll say, in my opinion, we'll see. See what you think, you be the judge. Uh, most of the community's residents are bilingual francophone of Métis or Québécois heritage. So like I said, French. So the people who settled this town were uh, the Métis and Quebecers from Quebec way back in the day. So like I said, we live in a very German, like Grunthal was my municipality where I'm from. That's a German heritage municipality uh, or a municipality of German heritage. Is that the right way to say it? And I always say we're surrounded by French municipalities, right? Settled by people with French heritage. And this is one of our wonderful French neighbors. So if you follow my videos regularly, you'll know that you can always tell it's a French town because they got a big Catholic cathedral or big Catholic church with big high steeples. The church is in my region, in the municipality of Hanover, uh, which has a lot of Mennonite heritage, uh, Protestant heritage, and... Uh, uh, other Protestant sects of Christianity, they have a different style of buildings. You see the Catholics always built big, grand churches and parishes, I think that's what they call them. Just beautiful. And ours are built to look more like warehouses. And there's a reason for that. Uh, my ancestors, I guess what you'd say, the Mennonites, the heritage, uh, we moved to Canada to escape religious persecution in Prussia and other places around Europe at the time, you know, everyone's always fighting over religion and uh, it's, it, it was a crazy time. And the reason they built their churches to look like warehouses and not like churches was to be able to hide them. At the time in the region where they were, uh, if the government were to find out that you were uh, practicing your faith or your religion, they would just burn your building down and chase you out, possibly kill you, uh, most likely kill you. So that's why they started making their churches to look more like random buildings and warehouses so that they could be less identifiable. And it's sort of come through the ages and sort of stayed that way. Most churches in Steinbeck, you'll see, some look more, more uh, churchy, as you'd say, uh, but a lot of them just look like regular warehouse buildings. And that's because that sort of followed us down through the ages, I guess. People uh, always had to hide where they were practicing their faith. The Catholics, on the other hand, Broadcast it loud and proud. This is the house of God. It is here. You know that uh, the steeples used to, by law, have to be the highest point in any city or town. It was illegal to build a building higher than the church steeple. So when that was still a thing, uh, church steeples would have to get built higher and higher and higher because the buildings were getting built higher and higher and higher and you weren't allowed to build your building higher than the church steeple, but they wanted to build, build, build big buildings tongue twister so what they what they did was they just kept building them higher and higher anyways a little tidbit for you there i'm gonna go check out that jesus statue over there you want to come with me i guess we sort of got to come at it from the front here i don't want to walk across their yard i'll walk on the walkway so it's a very small town this is the main drag right here i guess they call this main street you, know, you got your co-op food store off to the left, groceries, liquor, lotteries, hardware. They have a hockey team as well. We used to play against them. Like I said in past vlogs, I played for Landmark. We were the Landmark Blues. I forget what uh, St. Malo called their team. I know Grunthal was the Red Wings. Niverville were the Clippers. Niverville Clippers, Grunthal Red Wings, Landmark Blues. Oh, such a long time ago already. I miss it though, I miss playing hockey. I'd love to get involved in a rec league again or something. There's the white-tailed deer just off to the right. We're gonna go the opposite way now towards the provincial park. When you come to the beach in St. Malo or to the, to the park, this is the road you'll be going down.
So most of these places in here are not people who live here full time. They would be uh, people who have uh, extra money for a second getaway home. And they probably just live here mostly in the summertime, but they would also, I mean, a lot of people are here in the wintertime as well. Maybe they do live here full time all year round. Some of them probably do. This is what we'd call uh, cottage country, Manitoba. I know diesel, I'd really like to have one too, but can you imagine taking care of these places? The only way we could do that is if we had people who could take care of them for us. See, there are people here through the winter as well. So I guess it's, it's all up to you. I mean, if you have a cottage out here, if you want to be here in winter, it's accessible. A lot of people like this look like they shut it down for the winter and just come out here in the summer. So I'm sure there's so much more to share with you about these communities we visited today, Grunthal and St. Malo. Hopefully you got a little taste of two different communities with different heritage, but only about 15, 20 minutes away from each other. That was a lot of fun, eh, Diesel? We got to stop by the park in Grunthal too. You got to run around. That was fun. I'm gonna go home now. Britt didn't want to come with on today's adventure because she wanted to stay home with Wiener. He just had his surgery yesterday. And he's still feeling a little rough today. It'll take him a little while to recuperate, so she wanted to stay at home with him, which is understandable. So it's just me and the Weasel out exploring today. Next time we go out. We'll go somewhere new. I'm not too sure. We could go to West Hawk Lake by the Ontario border, or we go down to Emerson by the US border, or out to Winkler, Altona area, or into Winnipeg. I mean, there's, there's 101 of them, right? And how much do we have left now, 95? not going to return home without bringing gifts. I must return bearing gifts of the best sorts. We got the goods. I am not returning home empty-handed. Very important. Right. I feel like it was a good day today. I feel like it was good. Felt really good to get out and about. Come on, Diesel. Chef, you want to come too? Now you're going to stay up for a bit. Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> Diesel, you find her? Yeah. <laughs> Diesel, why are you sitting in the kitchen? Couldn't be because of this, could it? Is that why? Look at this chicken Caesar salad. Get a good look at that in quality, high definition. You have an admirer. I usually have a couple. One more over there. Another one over there, still recovering. You stay there, wiener. And the last one, I don't know what's up with him. He never bags. He never bags? Unless it's yogurt or uh, like cucumbers and carrots. Unless it's yogurt, I bet you I know where- Oh! He's in this one. 
somebody in here because they want a bath? He usually doesn't come in here because it's too close to the bathtub and he hates baths so much. <laughs> you can stay in here, bud. Nice and quiet and cool in here, eh? There you go, yeah. Continue. So I want to remind you all that I have a second channel that I'm starting up right now uh, called TJV Gaming. If you're into that kind of content, go down below to the description of this video. There's a link underneath what says TJV Gaming. Click the link and go subscribe to my channel there. I'm going to be posting something new onto that channel uh, today when you're watching this, so um, tomorrow for me, but you should be able to see it on that channel then. Uh, I'll release it probably around the same time as this was released, so it should be there already. But just so you know, if you're into that kind of stuff, I may post a few of them onto this channel as well, just to spread the word a little bit more about my other channel. We're going to keep this one going just the way it is. The vlogs are going to keep coming every day. Hope you guys do enjoy them. If you do, hit, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button on your way out. It helps me more than you think. And what helps me the most is if you subscribe down below. We make videos every day. We'll see you tomorrow. Take care.